Hello everybody, welcome on in to our second evening of the final draft of Alan Wig 2. And I'm just staring at moths just floating around the light right here. You know what they should have done is turn these into blue moths and then it's uh... The blue butterflies or whatever from Persona, but anyways, how's everybody doing? Hey there, and by the way, Max, I have been getting your messages, and I mean, like, I'll find them in general. I'm going to be paying attention to the collectible screen on Alan's writing room as pretty much as much as I can, because I know there's a few things that didn't make it into the initial cut of the game. For example, there's an echo in the first draft down in the subway that was uh, missing. No one could find it. I'm presuming they did not put it in the base game, but it's going to be in final draft. So... We'll see entirely, but we're going to go ahead and try to get as much of the, uh, we're going to finish up Saga section here, then pop over to Alan for a bit and spend a good deal of time just exploring, because from what I hear, a lot of the changes are in Alan's end of things, so we're going to be doing some close stuff on that. Anyways, just to get all the formalities out of the way, I just wanted to say hello, my name is Dean. I mostly do uh, video essays on the channel that handle um, stuff like the Remedyverse, Psychonauts, Hellblade, and things of that nature. 
Um, during this run through, since I already did a blind run of the base game, if you want to see that one, check earlier on in the playlist, it will be there. This one is mostly going to be us checking and hunting for the new things that are in the final draft and get the true ending of the story. With that said, I'm going to be talking about everything in the Remedy lore, all the way from Death Rally up to this point in the story right now. So, um, bear in mind, if you are blind to this, spoilers are ahead, but do not spoil me for any of the new stuff that's coming up. Anyways, all, let's go ahead and get going. So the 10th uh, Echo in the first draft is one of the things that are new. Gotcha, okay. Well, let's take a look at it. So we've already um, taken care of the overlap here, so we're going to go up into the Witchfinder Station, the Streamside, and Crow's foothills and just do a little bit of exploring because I know there are some things up there like a few nursery rhymes some lunch boxes and things of that nature so let's just go <coughs> pop our head up there real fast and having the setter charm right off the bat is going to be very very useful you found some glitches in new game plus you didn't see in the original well, hopefully I get lucky I think during my initial run I didn't run into any of the problems that a lot of other people had in terms of glitches. I got lucky on that. I'm, I'm actually going to be listening to these this time around. On Monday, I was a little... Partway through the stream, I started getting a little bit under the weather. weather. I had a... Uh, little bout of food poisoning yesterday. I actually had to take the day off, so by the end of stream on Monday, I was not feeling good, so I was kind of rushing a little bit, which I will do away with that now. Back at Witch's Ladle, Saga pointed the flashlight at the strange, dark substance. The same substance Nightgale had left at the morgue. There was something hidden under it. She strained to see. The opposite of sunspots in her eyes. Blacker than black. Suddenly a change. The light reacted to the substance, a feedback loop surging up her arm. Saga squeezed the flashlight, willing it to penetrate the dark matter. Burn it away. Okay, and these are just directly referring to the little things, little darkness blobs. Alright, so I know that there is a key somewhere around here. There's the cult stash, and then I think here is where the key's at. So let's go grab that real quick. But I do like some rifle ammo, which I should probably throw in the uh, inventory for right now, because I'm not using the rifle at the moment. Uh, what do, would you say, Emerson kid, that I missed during my the initial run? I mean, supplies around for themselves. that they are. There are some things that I found during my second run through, because I did do a second run off camera to take notes. So I did find a lot more stuff that I want to show off, but... I mean, if it's in the base game, I'd say go ahead and point it out if you catch me starting to miss something. But let me get to the area first. Because the problem I have a lot of times when um, people are trying to direct me to things is I just get so confused and turned around that I just run in circles nonstop for like a half an hour and we get no progress and it's just not entertaining for everyone around. A poem? Or a riddle? A little clothespin doll. Perfect weird souvenir for Logan. Reminds me of the nursery rhymes I read to Logan when she was little. Okay, one thing I'm going to be doing during this uh, run-through, which I did not do last time, is I'm going to try to analyze all of the poems, at least as much as I can, because I noticed a lot of these are actually very lore-relevant. Weirdly enough. So I'm pulling up a uh, file I have on the side with all my notes when I was doing these. All right, so one bird for light, two for darkness, three birds for a fight, four for a struggle, five birds for injury, six for misery, seven for the ending, whatever it may be. Now, 
this one, like, I can't really say much on here. The only thing I pointed out is that there are seven people in the dark place by the end of this. Which, meh, probably absolutely means nothing. This is probably the least lore-relevant one that I found, but anyways. I just love that Something a feels different. bird comes up and drops it around. to me. So if I remember correctly, I already have one of these, and I don't want to have duplicates, so I'm just going to ignore it. Otherwise, it's going to take up uh, my inventory space. Yeah, Dr. Campbell, weirdly enough, has recognized some stuff. Hi there. I'm just going to try to avoid this guy. I get it, I get it. You want to go get a stick of gum? Leave me alone. Alright. But the one up here, there's a lot more interesting things. Weirdly enough, a lot of it has to do with Saga as a character. Okay, for starters, let's go ahead and get this Colt stash over here. So it's going to be six Another on the box. rock. Six on the rock, eight on the tree, so it's six something eight. Woo! Where is it at? There it is. So it's either five six eight or six five eight. What would I say is it taken? Well, interestingly enough, okay, give, give me a second. Let me get this real quick and I'll get my, my thoughts out. I found this really odd. There we go. Do, do, do. Give me some more of you. flares, you and you. But the Taken in this game and the Taken in the first game actually do have different uh, rules about how they speak. So in this game, they tend to just repeat things from Alan's manuscripts, like parts of the story and lines of dialogue or description, they'll just repeat it. Like the words are tattooed onto their soul, so to speak. In the original game, they would say things that were unique to the character, the person that was taken over. For example, Stucky was all talking about tour stuff and like which is the best hot dogs and uh, Rusty would say things along the lines of like, oh, don't feed the animals. You need your hunt, your freaking uh, hiking permits and stuff like that. So it just goes to show the rules are different this time around too. I looked down at the rippling water. The moonlight danced over each and every little wave. A marching band of shimmering light, lonely and cold. I hugged myself and sighed. I thought of him. Then the surface of the lake calmed like a spectral surprise. He was there, his face smiling at me, reflected in the water. I looked up, not daring to believe it was true, but it was true. He was there. My love. My savior. My writer. So the question is, is this Rose just fantasizing, or did she legitimately see Alan's face in the lake? No clue. Okay, let's actually pay let's actually pay attention to what I'm doing. Ooh, not good. For some reason I've ha I always have a hard time avoiding these guys, even when I dodge them. Are you serious? These things always, like, have a part where they prowl towards you, and this guy's not doing it. There we go. Jesus, stop moving. I can't see them. Oh my god, I hate these things, because, like, don't stay still. And I'm about to die. Oh. No, 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 no! Don't do that! Bring up the shotgun, damn it! Now give me my arrow back, you little shit. Maybe it's just how the geometry was in that area, but it's a really bad space to have a wolf. Yeah, I'm wondering too, Laura, if the AI is a little different in nightmare mode. 
Because the second time around, it did do the short little thing where it prowls towards you, which gives you perfect time for headshots. But it didn't do it the first couple of times. Another one of those rhymes. Okay, first things first, let's get the power turned on. This one, if I remember correctly, was interesting. It almost feels like Dr. Campbell was accidentally getting inspired by Saga's life in some cases. Not consciously, but unconsciously speaking. And the FBC, in one of their no actually, I think it was in Dr. Campbell's things, he questions whether or not it's people can get unconsciously inspired by things that happen in the future, if that makes sense. And someone found the unfiltered audio for the Dark Place Shadows, and they are indeed voiced by Matt. Oh, okay, so Matthew Perda actually voiced all of the shadows. Okay, hold on a second, guys. Um, apparently in the game code... One second. They're called fade-outs. In the game's code, they call those little shadows on in the Dark Place as fade-outs. Whoa. Oh my gosh, my phone's going crazy right now. I don't know if I have all the things I need for this. So I think I need the wolf charm before I can do... Or the wolf thingy before I can do anything in here. Maybe it's up at Witchfinder Station. Let's head up here, then come back, because I don't think I have all the things we need for this one. It's all dialogue from Alan's breakdown. Makes sense. Like, I had a weird... hypothesis. It, it, like, maybe not a hypothesis. It was more just, like, a gut feeling that a lot of those shades are just aspects of Alan wandering around the dark place. We've reached the car, Anderson. How's it going down there? I think I'm done here. I'll meet you at the parking lot. There's a rhyme over here. So we'll see how it all works out on there. But yeah, that's the impression I got originally. An overlap of the dark place needed a push from both directions to manifest itself. Reality in our world eroded by repeated dark lore tied to a location and a counterpoint a work of art a horror narrative crafted in the depths of the dark place Connecting to the story on the other side to reach out through the weakened veil a Story of a lawman whose heart was cut out of his chest two corrupt men killed by their own twisted ambition a haunted old woman drowned in a bathtub twisted reflections on the other side of the mirror Arcs stabbing through realities, amplifying the influence of the dark place. These elements working in conjunction made a trickle that became a torrent, a wormhole, a vortex, and the art, the map, became the nightmare territory where the dark place encroached on our reality, a blanket over it, where they all overlapped, causing reality to twist and loop like a bad dream, remolding anything and anyone within its dark horror design. So, um, to answer your question, Laura, I don't know if the whole thing with Pat's radio broadcast being unavailable was a bug. I, I'm, it wouldn't surprise me if Remedy intentionally left the two gone until New Game Plus, solely because it would it's relevant to the plot. So they would treat bugs in the base game as, no, that was intentional, if you know what I'm saying. Actually, no, Aran. So I replayed the game, and I managed to get one more of Pat's broadcast, but the other ones were still bugged. I still wasn't able to get all nine of them. So the interesting thing about this is it gives us our reason why the stories in the subway station and the story of uh, Nightingale at the lake 
and the cold to the tree are closely tied because you need to have them reflect each other and echo each other, kind of like a Venn diagram of narratives with the overlap in the center. The same thing with what's going on with the NYPD detectives and Thornton and Mulligan, etc. Children in Bright Falls all grew up hearing stories about the cult of the tree. Feral maniacs living in the woods. Satanists chanting, we watch in the night as they perform blood sacrifices in the forest. Or things not quite human lurking in the dark. There were many versions of the story, but they all shared one important element. Danger in the dark, in the woods. Somewhere among all the urban legends lay a secret truth. The real identity of the cultists prowling in the woods. Real faces hid behind the masks. Real hands held the knives. Real people fulfilling a grim purpose. The forest was not safe. People were right to keep their children away from the trees. Mm-hmm. And in retrospect, we know exactly what this is all about. Oh, there it and is. And another lunchbox. Obviously, you're going to succeed, or else you wouldn't be the hero. Duh! Oh, gosh. Like, I can just hear all of these in her voice now. <laughs> then again, we kind of presumed it was her early on in the playthrough the first time around. <laughs> Tip of the day. When nature calls on a hike, check the direction of the wind before answering... That's gross. Observation. Hikers have broken off branches of some of the trees down by the lake to make an illegal fire. Tried to fix some of the damage, doused the area, maybe put up some instructional signs. I also found some tracks I wouldn't recognize. Pretty big. A wolverine or footprints that were smeared. Either way, they were wandering around in strange patterns. Might be a sick animal. Need to keep an eye out. Poem of the day. The sun, as she sleeps, knows none of the woes of men. Knows not the woes of men. Who toss and turn in worry and fret, and wish they had her blissful slumber. Now, it's interesting that the, because uh, I'm presuming these are all written by Campbell. I'm wondering if the suggestion of the sun as she, as the feminine, is in any way tied to Dylan Faden's uh, hotline call to his sister about seeing a woman that was the sun. And the spider webs on the moon, if you remember from the video I put up this morning. It's just nice to see a weird little parallel here. Thoughts of the day. Every majestic pine was once a wee acorn. That's a good way to put it, Robin. Alan's manuscripts and the stories he's writing are kind of fan fictions of real life folklore. Which is an interesting way to put it. A lot of new growth in the area. Some of the saplings I planted earlier are really thriving. Must be all this rain. Maybe this isn't written by Campbell. Never mind. It's amazing that I have a good night's rest and warm cup of tea. Um, Laura, it actually really depends. It's uh, regarding uh, masculine and feminine uh, representations in mythology. So let's look, for example, of... Uh, like the Greek, you're talking about Gaia, is what you're referring to as nature as being feminine. That's because they, when they plant something in the earth, the seed sprouts inside the earth and then erupts forward. So they look at the earth as like the womb of the plants, for example. But if you look at the Egyptian, we have Newt, which is the sky, the universe, was represented in feminine, where in Greek it's represented as masculine with Uranus. Now, the reason behind that is they consider the sky, the globe that surrounds us, as the cosmic womb, and earth itself is the... Uh, the seed inside of the womb, for example. So we have two different mythologies that represent the feminine mother as either the earth or the sky. It just depends on what you perceive, what, like what you focus on, I guess. And no, Amazon, I have not yet played God of War Ragnarok. I will be streaming that after, or the Valhalla DLC. I have not, I'm going to stream that after we finish this. I mean, technically, uh, Amaterasu, for example, in Japanese, is a feminine sun goddess as well. So, uh, different cultures have different representations. It's not always the same.
In in uh, Mexico, death is feminine as well. Okay. Two, five, four, seven. Like, it's only when you focus on one um, mythological or folklore structure that you get caught in the idea that, oh, well, they represent their deities in certain ways, but when you study lots of them, you'll see the differences. And there's Apollo, who's masculine. Also, Hyperion before him, because Hyperion was the sun uh, titan before Apollo took that role. But, yeah. Okay. I have received your favorable review of my project proposal. Thank you. I need not remind you that my academic as well as uh, recreational expertise in mythology, folklore, and writing will indeed lend the needed credibility to the project in both leading it and creating the testing material, Dr. Eugene Campbell. And of course, we were just talking about comparative world religion, and we have Dr. Campbell here, who's named after Joseph Campbell, who is a professor of comparative world religion and literature. <laughs> so, perfect timing. Dr. Marmont and Dr. Marmont, here is the promised update on the project's first experimentations. The test items were used were plastic animal figurines, teddy bears, tar, uh, toy cars, baby dolls. The iconographic nature of the test items were hypothesized to be beneficial for these research purposes. Test results were negative. I will continue to test with more advanced items and scenarios. And I think the reason why these ones didn't work is because they're not archetypal. When we're talking about, like, the wolf, or we're talking about the raven, or we're talking about the mother, or the father, or the child, and stuff like that, those are archetypal you are images. You handsome, dear. A toy car is not an archetypal image. Yes, Laura, I've read Hero of the Thousand Faces way too many times. <laughs> Joseph Campbell's a personal hero of mine. Hey there, all. Good morning, Otto. There is the hero doll and the wolf doll. And that's just going to tell us how many collectibles we have in these areas. And this is some... Yeah, I think this is the really interesting file right here that I was referring to earlier. Research into reality-altering effects discovered in the Cauldron Lake era utilizing fiction and art as a source and then manifesting the results into existence. The FBC's intent is... To in this research project is to experiment with nursery rhymes here and after referred to as fiction in an attempt to recreate the conditions under which the writings would become reality the hypothesis is that there are two ways in which fiction affects reality either by reflecting events that have come to pass but that are not known to their later creator whose act of creation therefore becomes the catalyst for these past events, after which they serve as a source of their own inspiration. So that is probably what we're seeing most of the time when Alan sees the echoes. He's seeing things that are going to happen in the future, whether that be from dreams, unconscious, inspiration, writes about them, and then they become real. So the question is, chicken or the egg, which is real? Did him seeing the future and writing about it, is the act of writing about it creating it? Or is he just becoming a prophet like any seer, like Odin, for example? Not the Odin in this, but just Odin in general. Where he, he's really transcribing the future events rather than actively shaping them. It's a subjective and chicken or the egg situation. Hey there, blah blah GDP. Glad you can make the stream. <laughs> Ouroboros, exactly. Well, it depends on which version of the Ouroboros we're looking at, but yes. Or by the fiction itself being the initiating force in its present timeline, using the creator as a conduit. Exactly. Did the events occur, and then they found an author to manifest them after the fact? It's really hard to say. Hey there, Gene Park. Welcome on in. Just discovered the Alawig 2 cycle. Oh, dude, well, welcome into our crazy train over here. In the experiment, we will create a nursery rhyme text and specific function, and then use depicted dolls and symbols as needed via careful testing processes, the purpose of the story told in fiction manifesting itself into reality. A variety of combinations involving dolls, symbols, and rhymes will be tested in order to collect large amounts of data, with the hopes that a pattern will appear. Methods will be adjusted in the testing based on our results. Alright, and since we're here, let's go ahead and 
fill in some stuff. Shouldn't spend time on old questions. Case closed. Nightingale goes missing for 13 years, shows up murdered, and then turns into a monster. After I stop Nightingale, a rider who's also been missing for 13 years turns up. What's the connection? What kind of case is this? Okay, that's done. Let's go ahead and throw a few of these things on here. And I'll get to some of the questions in a second, once I load this up. Right. Is the note inside to scare people off, or do they expect the people to break the rules? Okay. Nursery rhymes. Creepy dolls. Mysterious rhymes. No weirder than anything else going on, I guess. See, how I, like, there's multiple ways to look at the Ouroboros, is you have the cycle that repeats itself over and over again, the snake eating its own tail, but I also look at it as the undivided aspect of a, um, a thing. So, for example, I talked about it in my, um, God of War video on the Devouring Mother archetype about the fact that the uh, the mother archetype contains positive and negative aspects. It's not just positive as one thing and negative as one thing. In the Ouroboric nature of the mother, everything is included with it, the positive and the negative. So you can look at it as the undivided. Or you can think of it as, um, if you want to get into a different uh, theological system, we can look at the, uh, the Sephiroth, the top Sephiroth of the Tree of Life in the Kabbalistic philosophy of Kether, is the undivided, and then if you look at the glyph off of that being Thambiel, is the two-headed deity. So it's after that unity has been divided. So the Ouroboros would essentially be the undivided aspect. Anyways, sorry, I'm going off on random rants here. Okay, FBC file on the reality altering fix. <laughs> Let's go all the way down to the bottom. So the FBC is researching how fiction affects reality. Sounds familiar. Strange Dolls, the wolf. It's a pretty nice uh, paint job. Nice detail. Is that tin? Is that foil lining? Someone put a lot of effort into this. The FBC is definitely playing with things they don't fully understand. That is absolutely one hundred percent correct. And that always correct. goes well. Okay, I found a strange rhyme. Hmm. Oh, maybe it's down here? Yep. And then the crow doll, way up here. Kind of reads more like an owl to me. Which is interesting if we're going to treat the crow as an owl, the owl representing Alan, which is an interesting thing to think about. So we also have to keep in mind that the hero in this setting is going to be Saga, because she's the hero. Wolf can be equated to the Dark Presence or any other antagonistic force. The crow she considers an owl could be referring to Alan specifically. But we'll take a look and see what we can find in some of these little stories. Where is it? Exactly, uh, Bangarang. Yeah, Thaumiel is the same root for Tom, meaning twin. Yep, and Thaumiel meaning two-headed deity. So yeah, makes perfect sense. Tom Thomas. And that might have relevance to Thomas Zane over here as well. But anyways, moving onwards. The hero, brave and strong, left home to right a wrong. Okay, that's just Saga leaving her home in Virginia to come deal with the investigation. From the woods came the wolf so greedy and hungry, then he ate what he found in the house without a host. The hero returned to find she lost the thing she loved most. So if we refer to the wolf as the antagonistic force of the Alan Wake 2 storyline, she returned to find she'd lost the thing she loved the most, which would be her daughter. 
So the story or the antagonistic force came along and took her daughter. So Dr. Campbell is literally getting inspiration unknowingly from things that haven't happened yet as he wrote all these nursery rhymes. No, William Johnson, this is my first time um, I'm going through Final Draft, so don't give me any spoilers if you know what's going on at the end, but yeah, 100%. Uh, oh, dude, Draco, those uh, artwork look really freaking cool, by the way. For a Perankoth. Yeah, I same thing, Fatidus. I think it's funny that um, Mel, let the uh, act, voice actors <laughs> sometimes goes into her British accent every now and then. We found in the home, so let's find where's the home. Um, the hero returned to find it. She lost the most hero, brave and strong, left home. Right along from the woods came the hungry wolf. And maybe the hero? No. That's not right. From the woods came the wolf. He ate uh, what he found. Doesn't look right. House without a host. He returned to find she lost the thing she loved most. There we go. I have a weird feeling something's changed. And as re but there's also the other aspect of this where a wolf literally walked inside the house. What is this? And ate something. So here we have the wolf crawling What the hell? Up into the abandoned house. And ended up going over to the nursery to devour it. I will take Charm. that, though. Cute. It'll go great on the bracelet Logan made for me. Huh. That was strange. Gotta keep an eye out for more of these rhymes. It's not that the uh, da, da Popey, I hope I'm saying that right, um, it's not that the rhymes are supposed to be bad. It's being done by someone who's not an, a writer in any sense of the way. He's a, he's a uh, researcher of literature and mythology, but he's not a writer, so to speak. But yeah, that's definitely just referring to Saga coming to Bright Falls and then the story itself taking Logan. And a lot of these Dr. Campbell poems are going to be related to Saga's adventure. Oh, just had a little visual glitch there. How's the uh, frame rate going for everyone? How's the bit rate? We're not having the same problems we had last time. I'm actually working on the um, lecture. I was, I was editing the audio um, before stream started for the next video that should be out next week. And it deals a little bit with the quality of writing and as, and as it's intentionally done in some cases. But I'm not going to say more than that. A mother crow sits in her nest, guarding her babies, doing her best, to protect her home from the beasts coming to feast, but only a hero brave of heart can keep the two apart. Mother crow sits in her nest, guarding her babies. So we have the hero, or the crow, the wolf, and the hero. Hmm. Boom. Okay, so where is all of that? Where did it spawn? Charm. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this charm, but we'll see. I don't like that there's a wolf over there. Leave me alone, Wolfie. I don't want to talk to you. It's like every time one of Dr. Campbell's poems reference a wolf, a wolf spawns. And I do not appreciate it. Is it here? Oh no, it's way over there. And there's gonna be a wolf in, up there. I'm not gonna pick this one up though. What I do find interesting about this specific nursery rhyme is it takes us to the edge of a lake where a wolf waits. There's a small lake right through those trees that's supposed to be a minor stand-in for um, Cauldron Lake as a, the microcosmic versus the macrocosmic. 
Which I am not going to go grab that one because it's just going to backfill me and I really don't need it. Okay, so let's see over there. So we need a screwdriver on that. We've got a charm way over here, which we're not going to pick up. Why is there a crap ton of nursery rhymes in here? Oh, that's because, yeah, 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 yeah. They still have that bug in the game. Anyways, that's pretty much all we have to get here. Let's head on out. Yes, and she has the red hood. So one could argue that Saga is playing the role of Red Riding Hood right now. Never thought of it like that, but hey, if the shoe fits, right? Yes, I believe they did win Best Audio Design, Otto. They won Audio Design, or Art, Audio Design, no, Art Design, Art Direction, and uh, Game Direction, and shit, something else. No, 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 it wasn't Audio Design, I don't think they won Audio. I think uh, Hi-Fi Rush won audio. I would say it's not necessarily just Scratch that's a big bad wolf. I would say it's just the standing for the antagonistic force, which Scratch definitely is, but it's not limited to Scratch. Narrative, thank you. So yeah, best narrative... Game direction and art direction is what they won. Granted, they should have won soundtrack, personally, just because of the... the I wouldn't say the amount of effort, but just the diversity of music they have in this game between soundscapes... Between not just the soundscapes, but also the... Uh, different genres of music they put into this, how everything is lore relevant. Like, it's how music is just such a large part of the narrative itself that I think that beats having a good score. Why does the dark force, exp uh, the dark presence, as express itself as an antagonistic force? Well, antagonist just means it's in opposition to the hero, and the dark presence definitely is in opposition to the hero at all points. Alan is grandma. <laughs> and, whoa. This is what I get when I'm walking while trying to reach at. Let's not do that. And I almost think that Rose and uh, Casey would make a cute couple. <laughs> I don't know. You think Casey's into the uh, slightly uh, touched crazy chicks? <laughs> Dude, Dark Ocean Summoning. The reason why I find that song so freaking amazing because it's the anthem of the entire fan base to get to save our boy Alan. Literally, it's the we're getting our boy out with this tune anthem for all of us. You ready to go? Yeah, let's get going. Mr. Wake, we're taking you back to our field office in Bright Falls. You can freshen up there, and then we'll talk properly. Rose, I think, is 33, 34, 35. She's in her mid-30s hey, right now. Before you say anything, I'm totally fine. Don't freak out. Dad shouldn't have even texted you. Logan? No one texted me. What's going on? I'm totally fine. I slipped. That's all. God, it's not the end of the world. Put your father on the phone. Um, okay. Dad, it's Mom. Don't worry, hun. Logan slipped in the shower and bumped her head. She has a slight concussion, but I'm keeping an eye on her. Lucky I heard her fall. She could have drowned. Jesus, David. Why didn't you call? I tried. It didn't go through. She's fine, really. She was in the overlap of the time, so what obviously the call wouldn't have gone through. I'm stressed. No, it's a uh, just weird case, that's all. 
Well, if you need a hint, my years of board game victories tell me Colonel Mustard did it. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> Love you, Dave. Love you too, honey. Want to say bye to Logan? Just tell her I love her. Bye for now. All right, we're going to pause here for a second. So what I find interesting about this little section here is, one, when David says, oh, I tried to call you, didn't go through, we know Saga was in the overlap actively at the time when he tried to call her, meaning we have a timeline on when it happened. So basically, as soon as Saga did the ritual to put the heart through the witch's chest is when Logan had her fall. As if it almost initiated at the same time as part of the narrative. She went in, he'd try to call her immediately, and boom, nothing happened and came out of it. Anyways. And in completely unrelated news, um... Since he mentioned Curl and Mustard, I actually know how to semi-win every game of Clue I've ever played. There's a strategy that is unbeatable, and I will not elaborate further. Is there anyone you'd like us to reach out to, Mr. Wick? You've been gone a long time. No. No. They'd be in danger. It'll come for me. Okay, let's talk about something else. Robert Nightingale. Do you know him? You were both here in 2010. The Dark Presence got him back then. That's the last time I saw him. Thirteen years. Oh, fuck me. Tell us about the pages. You had what looks like a title page with you. Return. Is this the name of the story on these pages? The writer's name has been scratched out pretty violently, but your name can still be made out underneath. <laughs> scratched out. Yeah. Scratch. Did you write these pages, Mr. Wake? I'm trying to remember it. It's, it's a crazy jumble, like a, like a nightmare. I, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense. Here we go. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. We have a great show for you here tonight. All right, time to get our pay attention, everyone. One of my all-time favorite writers and guests on the show. He's here to talk about his latest book. Oh, oh. And as usual, our house man, old. Was I in a talk show tonight? Waking up in places with no memory of how I'd gotten there. It was out of control. I didn't need another mugshot in the fucking tabloids. Had I already done the show? Was that a recording? Alright, one second. I need to look something up real quick. Uh, move out of the way. Sorry, I got stuff all over my desk. Warm welcome. I felt a strange pull toward the TV. So, 
One thing we have to keep in mind, everyone, is that whenever we see the old gods and we see Odin specifically, we know for at this point. Actually, let me shut that down real quick so the door doesn't start talking halfway through this. But after Odin loses his eye in 1988, he takes the right eye, and the eye patch is on the right hand eye. Now. Odin complained that they took the wrong eye, meaning beforehand he always wore the eye patch on the left eye before he lost his the real one. So that, I in my head, means we can get a timeline on when these old gods of Asgard we see during these Mr. Dwarf sections actually enter the Dark Place and when they're existing. Because if it's the left eye, that means it's before he lost his real eye, and if it's the right eye, that's after he lost it. And what I, f I love about these starts, too, is... He touches his head immediately because that's right after he got shot. So from Alan's perspective, he just got shot by Saga in the head with a bullet of light. And then, boom, wakes up right here on the couch. Puts his finger to his head going, oh my god, I just got shot. He realizes, oh no, it hasn't happened. Or blah, 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 blah. It moved back. And yes, um, I'm going to say, do you think his eye is the key? Well, I'm going to say his eye is very important because it's actually really relevant to the Sea of Night song which came out on the rebirth album so i'll leave it at that well that's the former the eye monster in logan's drawing that's the former it's a control entity actually they they haven't really settled there's different accounts of which i odin lost left or right Good to see you, Alan. Great to see you. Welcome back to the Most show. of the um, on, accounts in mythology say answer. the left eye, but again, it's very mixed. There's no Woo! settled version of it. So <laughs> oh, right now, man. you see Odin with his left eye so uh, with the eye patch. Uh, this must be an exciting time for you. Tell me, does it ever get old? So does what get old? Publishing a new book. Are you okay there, my friend? You look like you've been cooped up in the writer's room for a few too many years. This is exactly how I feel. <laughs> you know, I've waited so long to get my hands on the sequel to Departure. You left us on quite the cliffhanger. We've all been dying to know what it's not a lake, it's an ocean really means. You and me both. Well, our wait is over. Your new book, Initiation, hits the shelves tomorrow. What? That's exactly what every reader will be asking. This book is mind-bending. It's so cerebral. I mean, how would you describe it? A an auto-fictional thought experiment? A, a, a horror story? A postmodern detective story? Wait. This isn't right. I, I haven't written anything. He's so humble. Okay. You got me. Good prank. Very funny. But yeah, I sad to say, I, I, I've not written this. I, I'd remember if I'd written a book, right? Or maybe it was written by your evil double. Maybe I was half expecting Mr. Door to be a little bit more antagonistic at this point, well since this is man. the next time they've seen him. On. Playing the role here. Because this is Depending after he threatened Alan the, the last time they met, very chronologically. Indeed. You see, Initiation tells the story of a fictional writer named Alan Wake who is trapped in a nightmare, desperately trying to find the manuscript of a novel he has forgotten that he has written. The book is set in New York, but it might not be New York at all. He is tormented by his dark doppelganger, guided by visions of a fictional detective he has written. That's right, Alex Casey is in this book as well. Uh, I guess we'll just keep doing this the whole show. The joke's on me. But isn't that what you sign up for with autofiction? No, but seriously, I found the, the structure of the reality you build in the book fascinating. It reminded me of The Matrix. I mean, the writer is physically in his writer's room, trapped there, and he projects himself out to this dark dream of New York through the story he is writing. Uh, like astral projection. Did I get that right? Yeah. That's exactly right. Go on. I should be taking notes here. This is great stuff. Notes to that other Alan Wake in that room writing this as we speak? 
Are we all in your story, Alan? <laughs> wow. No, I, I, I wish you every success with your new book, Alan. I hope it's as successful as your best-selling Alex Casey series. Initiation hits the shelves tomorrow. After this, I'm sure we'll all be eagerly awaiting the culmination of this hero's journey trilogy of yours. A book called Return, perhaps. Man. Oh no! Thank you for one of the strangest. Door absolutely knows what's going on. He he's very much immune to all of this. He's just intentionally allowing himself to be playing the role. Hello. All right, let's do this. I'm losing it. Something's not right here. I needed to get home. To Alice. Alright, we're on the lookout for new things now, ladies and gents. So that's going to be the area we're going to... What the hell was that interview? Some kind of joke? Initiation? I never wrote a book called Initiation. This felt like a bad dream. Could make a good horror story. Okay. Well, see, I don't think we get any evidence that Mr. Door here has any musical talent. Because remember, Loki was the one of the original guitarists for the old gods of Asgard, and if he is essentially supposed to be the same entity as Martin Hatch, then he is far, far older. Because Hatch, a.k.a. Dor, found a time machine in a cave in Africa a very, very long time ago. They don't give us an exact time, but it literally could be tens of thousands of years ago. Anyways, moving onwards. Old Gods of Asgard. That name sounded familiar. Do not unplug. That is absolutely correct. Take control. Yep. I don't have a flashlight, which is not good. Sea of Night. So yeah, this one, weirdly enough, um, in Valhalla, when Odin was recovering from his uh, hangover, basically, um, at his, the f uh, the foot table of his bed, they, he was writing notes about Sea of Night, and it referring to him giving his eye to Mimir from the Mimis Burner, the Well of Wisdom, etc., and wondering where the eye went. I was a mess. I had never heard of this talk show or Mr. Door before. None of it felt right. There's was a I boy! Alright. We also got some Black Pyramid stuff up here. Well, Dark Place 100%, Jacob. The Dark Presence has basically been around since creation. So it's definitely the oldest. Door, if if we're going under the perception that Door is Hatch, then it only existed since humanity existed. Time is broken here. Maybe time never worked the way we think it does. It loops around it, and yet it goes forward. A spiral. I thought it was finding remnants of the earlier loops, earlier drafts of my writing. Earlier sights that I had left clues. Mementos for myself to guide me on them, maybe. That's only part of it. If telling this not a straight line, then there are loops beyond these loops. Vast complex superstructures beyond what's happening to me now. I, I had it me. And I'm there as well, a version of me, something. I have become some elevated, enlightened virgin, an archon, a demiurge. A Ooh. A secret game. Building something. His past self upon to get there. A 
Deus Ex Machina pushing me there. I hate the idea of a crazy, intrusive thought. And yet, no crazier than anything out there. Which version of myself was I? <laughs> <laughs> this is de I knew this was going to be new though because we came here during the base game this one just started and sputtered off before we got a chance to see it all right so a few different thoughts we have here because yes we are going to pause here and have a very long fun little conversation um from a writing perspective do you think alan was aware of a future quote-unquote enlightened version of himself, or was he pulling a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and just saying, yes, at some point in the future there's going to be an enlightened version of me that's going to help me, and by making that proclamation, it forces it to happen, therefore he has someone to guide him to becoming that person. But more importantly, he refers to himself as possibly either a Demiurge or an Archon. Now, those are very Gnostic philosophies. Those are terms from Gnosticism. Now, a demiurge is essentially uh, the word for craftsman. It's the old... I, I forgot which language it's from. It's, it's an old language uh, for craftsman. And it was used in Gnosticism to refer to the creator of the universe. But it wasn't the god of the universe. It was something that believed itself to be god. Uh, for those who have played Persona 5, which I have not, but I, I'm aware of what the uh, antagonist is... In Gnosticism, the Demiurge of our universe is Yaldabaoth, and they refer to it in Xenoblade Chronicles as well, the first game. The, um, uh, the one dude on the, uh, the mech, the, the golden mech was named Yaldabaoth for the exact same reason. Is it Sanskrit? Okay, thank you. Now, Archon is another term used in Gnosticism. Now, the word itself just means something, it's kind of like a leader or a politician or some kind of like ruler of a specific area is what it was, the term is used for. But within the theology, Archon refers to a extra dimensional entity that feeds upon strife. It intentionally causes strife within humanity for the purposes of feeding off of that negative energy. Yalda Beoth, yes, Max. Anyways. So it's just interesting to see them pulling from Gnostic philosophy in this. I've never I don't think I remember seeing Remedy doing that before. Anyways, moving on. And if you really want to get into it, and you want to get into more of the Kabbalistic philosophy, uh, a Demiurge or the Yaldabaoth, for example, would be, in essence, the Glyphoth of Binah. Or, yeah, the, the Glyphoth of Binah. So Binah is that point in time where uh, material the, is, world is manifested into reality. Now, the Glyphoth of that is Satariel, which basically is the thing that makes you forget that anything came before creation. And so the Demiurge, a.k.a. Yaldabaoth, believes itself to be the creator of this because it cannot conceive of anything that occurs before him. Now, if you want to get into the closest thing to the Pleroma, you're probably going to get a Braxis. But, sorry. And I'm not going to elaborate on that because that's too long of a story to get into, but moving onwards. The problem with the Demiurge is it forgets that something before came before it. And this is where we get into the Ouroboros. So the Ouroboros would be considered the plurum of the divine unity, but the second you start dividing it... Because if the Demiurge has its own identity, therefore it is not unity, therefore it is not the plurum, or therefore it's not the ultimate version of God, so to speak. But anyways... There was something in the studio with me. I had to get out. Okay. Hey, take it easy, blah blah, no worries, dude. Up from the night. 
nightmare, I felt like a drowning man gasping for air. This place felt familiar. A ghost of a memory surfaced, about riding here for countless days. Okay. So, like, eventually I'm gonna sit down and make a timeline chart of how this entire thing happens, but this was essentially the first draft of this, and then he's gonna semi circle around the spiral and come back to out a story. that scene again. On the index cards, the nightmare that just happened to me. A summary of the story so far. But other notes as well. Warnings. I had written them. I couldn't remember what it all meant. The name Scratch filled me with dread. I could trust these words. I had to act on them. You must write to escape. So it's very possible that yes, the red light is intended to remind us of the hiss. No, this is not the hiss, and no, it's not related to the hiss. But it's intended to represent that oppressive alien force to us. But there also might be another reason why they use red in this, which I am not going to say yet. Because I want to do a little bit more research on this before I settle on it. And it ha comes entirely down to once we look at the neon lights. Weirdly enough, just ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> I had to write more. Okay. Yo, yo, so yeah, we're missing one song, which I'm presuming is going to be Sea of Night. Oh, no, 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 it's not going to be. So there's one song that's missing from here. And I can't look at that yet. Okay. At the talk show, I had thought I was home in New York, but none of it had felt right. I was trapped in the dark place, a nightmare beyond our world. The writer's room was my safe haven. My writing affected what was outside. I was trying to write a story to escape this place, the story called Initiation. With the story I wrote, I projected myself out to look for a way to escape. I had tried many times, failed. This place made me forget. I had to keep writing. So now what's going to happen here is Alan's going to go back and rewrite the scene we just saw. So that it allows him to continue. So technically, we're not continuing and going back to another version of the talk show. We're resetting the talk show to start at a different place that Alan can now proceed from. I didn't remember much. But I knew my thoughts and ideas could manifest as reality in this dark place. I'd use my writing to project myself out of this room, like a deep sea diver to go deeper and explore the depths of this prison for a way out. This room was my boat. Writing was my lifeline. I would start again at the talk show. Yep, yeah, so now we're resetting the loop. Or the spiral, I should say. Oh, that's new. I just got shot, so now this is literally started in the exact same place, but the story's a little different. Thank you. Oh, you're too kind. Welcome back. Uh, we have a great show for you here tonight. A real treat for all you Alex Casey fans out there. Alex Casey himself is here tonight. That's right. Sam Lake, ladies and gentlemen. The actor who has given his face to the famous detective in the film series. And of course, we have Alan Wake here. The best selling writer, the books, the films are based on. Let's do this! And again, the, the eye patch for Odin is on the left eye, which makes me wonder if when they were younger, the old gods made it down here. And this is a version of them from way, way back in the day. Not after they went back into the lake before when they were younger. Anyways. Welcome back to the show. So, Alan, as the uh, creator of the character, how do you feel about this? Sorry, what? I know it can be an awkward question with the man sitting right next to you, but I mean, how do you feel about him in the role of Casey? Does he look the part to you? Uh, 
He looks exactly like I always imagined Casey to be. It's uncanny. Thank you. That means so much to me. I'm a huge fan of your books. So, uh, what's the problem, Alan? Because on more than one occasion, you voiced your reservations about the adaptations. Uh, it's not that. They're their own thing. They've gone with choices that are different from mine. I, I, I feel protective about my stories, and these adaptations... I, I don't know. I, I guess I just wish I could have been more involved in making them. Well, in that case, you won't have seen this either. We have a clip from the new film, Murder Case Case. Should we roll it, or do you want to say something first, Sam? Nah, just roll it. This city was an old scar that refused to heal. The rain made it fester. It needed the sun, but there was only the night. I was tired. Insomnia covered me like a plastic film. I was watching the world through a rain-slick window, my own reflection haunting the view. I was trying to track down a missing writer. My only clue was a table lamp, shaped like an angel. The only thing that shed light on this sordid mystery. That's great! Murder case, Casey! Great job, Sam! Very exciting! And very meta. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Wait, stop. What was that about a writer? About a lamp? We're back. So based upon that little thing, what I can presume is that at some point after the story ends, Casey's gonna get his hands on the lamp as part of the story, or he's gonna be cast in a role that has him getting a hold of it. But to answer your question, um... Or just to add on to your thing, uh, Mr. Duck Sauce. So time outside of the dark place back in reality does run in a linear fashion but in the dark place time has literally no meaning here because it's literally the chaos state of everything that could potentially happen or has happened or will happen so all stories that ever have been are or will be and every variation of them all exist smashed together in this tier of reality and if that's the case then all stories happening at any point in time happening are now so time is kind of a pointless it's a moot concept in this place so yeah the second someone comes down here they're basically here forever even if they manage to get out because time is meaningless they are always gonna there's always gonna be a version of them here it's not that dark place is yeah so in the dark place time is just kind of like Nothing. Yep. So Sam Lake and Alex Casey are canon. Which actually makes me wonder on why Sam Lake is here. Because if we remember... Does anyone remember the um, third developer diary for American Nightmare? Where Sam who is giving an interview on the game before its release, literally gets abducted by Mr. Scratch and taken to the dark place and forced to write for him. I wonder if Sam ever got out or he just became an actor down here to play his own role. And there's Poe. Beautiful. So it's going to be 565. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. You to you? I um, mean, technically speaking, at some point... In this setting, it's really kind of hard to say what really happened versus what appears to happen through a piece of fiction, because a piece of fiction is real in this setting. <laughs> so it's really tough to say one way or another.
Why did you do a freaking 360? I don't have a gun. We can't do 360 no scopes there, Alan. I'm sorry. Okay, nothing here. What is the meaning of... Are you, not 565, 665. Um, we still kind of don't know the meaning behind 665. It started off as a joke in Max Payne 1. And Remedy just keeps going along with it. It's the neighbor of the beast. Well, Alex Casey investigated a murder cult. Yes. I don't think they called it the cult of the word. Or at least, I don't think the real-life Casey referred to it as the cult of the word. But in the dark place of uh, Casey's investigation, yes, they were the cult of the word. I mean, like, to, to get through this game and understand it, you have to look at the fractal patterns of multiple stories on top of each other that are similar but not the same. It's kind of tough. Hello? Hello there, Mr. Janitor Man. Anyone knows that movie reference, you win a cookie. One of my favorite movies of all time. Ah, no raid. There you are, Tom. Oh. Not so much evil that not a bit of good as well. Not one without the other. <laughs> exactly! You can't have the good without the bad in every human being. There's the champion of light, and I'll show you the herald of darkness that lies within that. For every saint, there is a demon inside of them. Ati recognizes this. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, I, I can't seem to find my way out of here. Can you point me to the exit? Wait, Gregory Finch, you actually got that? Yes, Crossroads with Ralph Macchio. Con Dude, Gregory Finch gets a freaking cookie. Hell yes. I love that film. <laughs> of course, Tom. The work will instruct its maker. I was gonna get something from the basement for you, but... You can get it yourself now. Uh, the more cooks, the worse the soup. <laughs> Have we met before? Are you trapped in the dark place too? You remember Ahti, the janitor. You can't be lost if you don't worry about where you are headed. So don't worry, Tom. The sun will shine even into a heap of twigs. Just remember to turn on the lights. It won't take long when you get to work. That's honestly one of my favorite lines with him, is you can't be lost if you don't care about where you're going. <laughs> I love that so much. Hey there, Fuzzy. Thank you so much for the donation. Now the time is for the axe, and Tom would have to shoo the devil from the back stairs. Turn the lights on when you are kept awake by the rattling. <laughs> what do you want me to get from the basement? And my name's Alan. Not Tom. Yeah, yeah, but I got up a man's. A man, but a man with a tool makes two, Tom. Agree? <laughs> and a man with a tool can build his own exit. It's in a shoebox in the basement where you left it. <laughs> Safe as in the Lord's purse. Here's the key. Thank you, Afti. I've been trying to find a way to escape the dark place. Any suggestions? He who mouths about his troubles is the prisoner of his troubles. It's not easy to get out. But don't you worry, Tom. The home is still there where the heart is. I often think about it when I mop the floor and look into the puddle. Water is the memory of the world. Water finds its way. The janitor was a bit out there, but still a friendly face. 
Better. I had to trust the basement would get me out of here. Alrighty. So I actually went down and translated all this at some point. Let me find my notes on this. Did I misspell this? There it is. It's something like the Ayota Noon something right there. It's something along the lines of it doesn't get any darker or something. And the other one that's um, on the left says the dawn reveals what the darkness hides. So yeah, the dawn reveals what the darkness hides. That's what's written up on here. Like, no joke, when I'm working, this is me. I literally go, do, 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 do. I just, like, freaking hum and sing to myself all the time when I'm working. Okay. There's the way down into the basement. How's Ati in the dark place? Ati does what he wants. That's all I got to say about him. There's another Poe. I just want to be extra thorough in the Allen sections. If I can find where the door to the basement is, there it is. Afroponics, I think it's kind of... The simple fact that in the dark place time is meaningless means that the whole question about who wrote who is pointless. Because you can't create something out of nothing, and anyone who touches place in the dark place therefore has access to knowledge throughout all of time. So you just call upon a character that is someone that lived that you are aware of and write about them. It's there's no who created there's no who created who. It, it's a moot question. Yeah, Ati is a god of fishermen and sailors and all that stuff. So, of course, what does he do? Anyone who's sailing the cosmic ocean, he is a guide for. Period. I appreciate it, Jackson. Yeah, like, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find everything in this. Um, but if, you have, if, I, if it looks like I'm going to miss something... Uh, throw at me, just at me real quick, and I'll see the note, but for the most part, I'm just gonna do what I normally do, and I should find it. An old lamp and a shoebox. Was this what the janitor had left for me? The lamp felt significant. A tool for bringing light to the darkness. Welcome on in, Johnny Cole. Glad you could make it live, too. I felt a magnetic pull between the lamp and the light overhead. And let's go. Whoa! When the light jumped into my lamp, the whole room changed. Like something in a dream. Opening a way forward. The lamp was humming. The bulb glowed. It held the light now. Why is this here? I mean, were they making, like, cow statues out of hay or something? Like, my neighbor growing up used to make these in the shape of animals, little wire um, things, because he would put... Uh, bushes inside them and then cut around the metal so that the bushes would always be in the shape of the animals. That's why I'm, my mind's in that place. I felt another surge from the lamp. I could use it again. Yeah, there is way too many metal layers in this narrative that... The glow in the lamp went Unless out, you're slightly crazy... the light in the room. <laughs> you're not gonna pick the up all The light carved out something new from the darkness. 
I'm just curious why, curious why the Harry Garrett show is back here. That I have no idea. Yeah, so it pushes you out. Um, so, so far, cool, but what I heard is that if you pick up a, um... Are you talking about if the charms stack, like their effect is duplicated? I have no idea. I have absolutely zero idea if that's the case. Here we go. Actually, before we do that, let's poke our head around. Lumi Luma Vista. Okay. Okay. I don't think there's anything in here. The dark place wants to drown me. I'm losing myself. I have to fight it. I have to remember the clicker, the light switch. I lost it, but I have the lamp now. The lamp the switch was cut from. This place is a nightmare. Not real and yet more real than anything. The danger and the horror are real. It feeds off my mind, twisting whatever it takes into psychotic reality. I'm trapped here. I write to escape. I've tried this many times, written countless stories, forgotten how many. I keep failing. But I must keep trying. I use the story to dive deeper. Every word I write is a step forward on this spiral of the darkness. I dive to the bottom to find the answer, the map, the map, and the key, and the compass. That's combined to form a door leading out. But how do you open a door that's not a door? At the bottom of an ocean, that's not an ocean. And a lake, that's not a lake. Yes, Jackson, I got that one. So what I enjoy about the uh, Poe song here is that there's three verses to it, and during each draft of the story, Alan gets a different version of it for his end episode song. Oh no, we're not stopping here, don't worry. But you don't see me anywhere I'm right in front of you I'm right here On this moment in world What are you looking at? Is it your face on a pane of glass? Cause somehow this window becomes a trap on this world. Well, Patrice, like, I don't see Doors really caring about getting out of the dark place. I don't even think he's... I think he's exactly where he wants to be. Fade into black Forever I am Circling back Just So in, my, in my version of this story This winding road Um, the Alan we see on the TV screens was the one who wrote the original version of return and then later this Alan goes and starts to edit it and then that's where the third Alan comes in and stops from making the edits but anyways let's go So now we got some new stuff over here. The dark presence was out there hunting me. When it caught me, it killed me. I'd wake up here, refuse to give up, I'd start again. The talk show felt real and not real. Alex Casey was my creation, but now it seemed he had a life of his own. He mentioned a lap shaped like an angel. The janitor seemed to know me, but he got the name wrong. I, had I written him into existence? He said I had left something in the basement, a tool to get out. I found the lamp in a shoebox in the basement, a tool to push the darkness away. In the light, a new reality emerged, carved out from the dark. On the security screens, I saw myself in the writer's room writing, mad, but it was not what I was writing now. A vision from the past I had forgotten. Lamp in the shoebox. 
opens up the way, the writer's journey. So now we have Spiral, which I don't know where along this writer's journey the Spiral occurs. Okay, here we go. Alright guys, uh, real quick, I need to go refill my water and go on a quick bio break. I will be right back. One second. And we are back in. Oh, God. Let's get going and get that. The payphone was ringing. I'll get to the pay. Actually, Somehow, let's, I knew the call let's was do the payphone me. first, and then we'll start exploring a bit. See if this is any different. Hello? Hello, Wake? Yes. Do you know who I am? No. Who is this? We'll get to that later. No. Same. There are spies all over. Shadows. A sense of deja vu washed over me. Yep. Had I had this conversation before? Helen, listen to me carefully. Caldera Street Station, the subway. You need to go there. I'll call you again later. Make sure to pick up. There's deja vu Do I again. Know you? I, I know you from somewhere. You just forgotten again. We're in this together. Don't worry. I got it now. We've been working. Great. I, I'm losing you. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Yeah, there was only a little bit of different dialogue, just Ellen's mentioning deja vu right there. Everything else was the same. 
So they're just making it so the characters the are somewhat Station. aware. I had to go there. Heart home. Oh boy, the cat's waiting to come in again. All right, let's see what the kitty wants this time. Oh, and I'm dropping controllers. What's up, kitty? What's up, cat? What you doing, Zoe? Everyone say hello to Zoe, Her Majesty. Hi there, good girl. Hi there, sweetie pie. Okay, and then she's out again. <laughs> She only wanted to hang out with me for a second to get some chin rubs and then run off. Where am I? Where am I? Let's head on down. I arrived. So I heard someone say earlier in stream that um, they removed all the voice effects off of the uh, shadows here. They're called fade outs, and it's actually Matthew Pareto voicing all of them, which is rather interesting. Is this the way it was on the page? What the hell? Oh, hey, we met at Door Show. Alan Wake, the writer. I'm Alex Casey. I'm looking into a murder. Come on, what? What is this? There's a piece of evidence, a manuscript of a novel. You wouldn't know anything about it? A manuscript? What manuscript? I need to see it. Rumor had it the manuscript contained the details of the murders. A murder cult was following the story to commit their gruesome acts. Was Wake their leader? Had he written it? How far would he go to create a perfect work of art? Or would he be the next victim? That's what I'm thinking too, Jinx, that all these are previous failed versions of power running around. Stay here. No, wait! I need a gun! No chance. Alright, and again, this is just one of Casey's dreams that we're witnessing in real I life. I his gun and flashlight to protect myself. And Queen Zoe decided to return. Hopefully she, she doesn't do what she did last time. Last time this she came in here when I was streaming. I had written for years. Picking up Casey's gun felt like I was assuming the role of the detective. She literally knocked over the switch and broke stream. <laughs> But which Casey was having the stream? Which movie was it from? He kept mentioning the um, Alan writing the book, so it might be the one that's investigating the cult. This particular cult case. Oh, there she is! Hi there. Oh my gosh, there is a tail in my face. Oh my gosh. Gonna grab a seat. Gonna grab a seat. There you go. Hi there, good girl. There's your good girl. Okay. 
Same here, Dan the Hitman. I'm looking forward to the DLCs like crazy. I have a light now. I could use it to make my way deeper. Oh, she's purring something too. something hidden here. A phrase repeated over and over. The words resonated with meeting. Had I written this? Yeah, so the biggest things when we're in the dark place that we have the question, there's technically two questions we should ask ourselves. Which version of the character is this and when th is this taking place in that person's story? Because a lot of what we're going to find in Alan's um, narrative from here on moving forward is technically a film. And I have evidence to support that we're actually going through the movies that were written about Alex Casey, but we'll get to that as we go. Words of fix. Increases maximum health. You know what? Frankly, I think for the... Let's start here and then go back to the other one. But yeah, we're actually playing through movies a lot of Alan's gameplay. Who is writing the words of power? Technically, Alan is. Shit. With the alley in darkness now? Oh, Let shit. I didn't pick up my way. weapons from, from the uh, shoebox. I didn't pick up all my stuff from the shoebox. That's my bad. Didn't. Here's the sun. The, they were the opposite of sunspots. Flashlight. I could fight back. All right, we're gonna go on a few, a little bit of a collectible run, real quick. Please don't follow me. Somewhere around here. Okay, maybe we can't get the one that's over here yet. Okay, never mind. Because technically there is a word of power somewhere over here, but I don't think we can get it to it just yet. Hey there, Jaunty. Dude, you're awesome. I'm glad I was able to help. Is it? There it is. Ooh, words of action. And I am going to do that in a safer place because I don't trust this area. Painkillers. Yep. Okay, I'm going to go run and find some light, like right now. Oh, shit. Screw you. Go away. No one likes you. All right, we're safe. Actually, I think there's a shoebox um, in the room where we, at the, right before we exit Mr. Door's studio. Oh, there's a good girl. Increases damage received from dark projectiles. That's not a problem. Creatures damage dealt to enemies in close proximity. Yep, let's go ahead and do that. Beautiful. Um, I'm trying to remember where the other words of power were. See, we got that one, but that one's bugged for whatever reason. I know there's one, like, right here. Or right here, but we can't get to it until we get to the next section of it. I thought there was one, like, right over here, but I guess we're locked in for the time being. The Caldera Street station sign was there, but the entrance was missing. I had to make it appear. Maybe I could use the lamp to reveal the station entrance. Oh, dude, Dan the Hitman, Quantum Break is so relevant to this game. It's not even funny just how relevant it is to these characters. And we'll talk more about it shortly as soon as we get to Tim's room. Whoa. Wake. 
leave me alone. Do, do, do. And there we go. Cold case Casey. The rain tried to wash away the sins of this city. <laughs> but some sins, the evidence of the crimes committed could never be erased. Not by the rain or any amount of therapy from Dr. Jack Daniels. It remained bruises under my skin like tattoos. Bruises in my soul. Scar tissue on my heart. The rain never stopped falling. And I never stopped drinking. I don't remember which one of these films is the one that um, we're playing through. I think it might be Murder Case. I'm not 100% positive, though. Who's Jack Daniels? It's it's uh, it's alcohol. Jinx. He's basically saying that therapy from diving down to a bottle wasn't helping. I have no ammo. Do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, I don't. We don't have an announcement auto on when the Max Payne remakes are coming out. So I can't really say much on that, unfortunately. Hold on, sweetheart. No, 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 you don't have to get up. It's okay, little girl. Sorry, I just shifted my chair closer to the computer screen and she decided, she took that as meaning I was kicking her off. I'm like, no, sweetheart, you can stay. over there that I didn't miss, unfortunately. What up, Tim? Hello. Oh. Hey, Alan. You snuck up on me. Sorry, have we met? Okay. Memory problems again, huh? Yeah. Yes, Megalodon, we're playing a nightmare. Tim Breaker. We've shared notes. Hey, I've made some progress on the map, if you want to take a look. You still haven't found my mystery man, though. Hold on, hold on. Down we go. Sorry, I dropped the controller. You're making a map. Trying to. It's hard to map a dream, though. I keep ending up in unexpected places. I find interesting things like those strange markings that react to light, but never the one thing that I'm looking for. Feel free to check the map out. Definitely oh, I've been will. Stockpiling supplies while I poke around. If you find a stash, take anything you need. I appreciate the help. Who's this mystery man? Oh, it wouldn't be much of a mystery if I knew. All I have is a name. Warland Door. The talk show host? No. No, that doesn't sound like him. The guy has many disguises, but a talk show host? No. I'll keep looking. All right, give me a second, guys, because I do want to bring something up real quick um, relating to Quantum Break. So probably one of the most relevant things... Oh, shoot, that picture's not going to work. All right, there we go. So let me go ahead and switch over to my computer real quick. 
Alrighty, so... Wait, is it not... It's not showing me anything. Darn it! For some reason, it's not actually showing my monitor. Uh, display capture... There we go. Alrighty, so the Untitled Note is uh, something that's found in Quantum Break. And it's near the end. It's probably the most important document we find in the game. Now, this is extremely relevant to what I think is going on with Door and Tim Breaker in this game. So let's just read the whole thing, and you'll understand with fresh context of Alan Wake 2 what I see when I read this. I have left this message here for you to find so that when the time comes and I ask you to choose, you can do so with your eyes open and with some hint of understanding. I have no secrets, and the only thing I choose to admit are the ones that you in your current limited state would not be able to grasp no matter how hard I tried to make you understand. Remember, um, at the end of the game, of this game, Dor refers to Tim as his unwilling disciple, which is going to mirror the relationship between Martin Hatch and Jack Joyce in Quantum Break. I have walked down the same path you are on, once from your perspective a long time ago, although time no longer has such meaning to me. I too came in contact with a time machine. In my case, it was not a man-made device, but a natural one, in a cave. It should come as no surprise, really, that such things exist, much like, much like natural nuclear reactors do exist, such as the now-defunct ones in Oklo, Africa. After all, the Meyer-Joyce field has its irregularities. I too became chronon active. I too developed chronon syndrome, and in time, I too lost control and became a shifter, became at once everything and nothing, was everywhere and nowhere, died countless times and was still alive, my every probability, every possibility happening at once. I promise I would not lie, and thus I tell you the noise and the pain and the rage were more than anyone could suffer and not go insane. I burned in this fire a long time. There were brief moments of awareness in this endless nightmare, different versions of certain key moments in my life that I found myself reliving again and again, trying to make things right, like a puzzle, on and on and on. I am convinced that the stutters and the end of time saved me, for those were the only places, the only times, where I could even briefly stop and rest and slowly find focus and control again, and ultimately master this state, not emerge from it, not be cured, not go back to what I was before, for there is no such thing, but to learn to be in one place and everything at once. My perception is altered, like that of someone who has seen a, percept a perceptual illusion, and discover that the picture is both a young girl and an old woman at the same time. Once you see them both, you can never not see them. We are such limited beings, we play at just one piece, on just one square of an endless chessboard, just one life, one timeline, in an infinite multiverse of possibilities. Am I an exception, the only one who has found his way to the other side? Or is this just a shifter, brief's dream before a stutter collapses? There are other shift. This is the important part right here I wanted to mention. There are other shifters. You, your best friend who is now your mortal enemy. Dr. Kim. Others. Some of whom you know. It doesn't matter who because they are gone. And when they emerge, if they ever emerge, they will not be who they were. Just as I am not who I was before. I have done my part in helping you achieve this state. And this is the important part right here. Because if they emerge, they will not be who they were. Jack Joyce, Tim Breaker's not Jack Joyce, but he is Jack Joyce. Jesse Faden, Beth Wilder. You also have Dylan Faden and Nick Marsters. And there are some th hypotheses right now regarding Chester Bless and someone else from Quantum Break. If time is an ocean with a frozen surface, then the stutters and the end of time are holes in that ice. Opportunities to come up for air... I have a plan, it's already in motion, but it would be futile to try to explain it to you, like trying to explain three dimensions to someone who can only see one. But make no mistake, I do not look down on you. I strive for humility even as I shift this world from one state to another. I'll make this possible. I stand in between. I don't... I stand in between. I don't see myself as a gate. I remain humble. Something smaller. A door. So the entire concept that I'm seeing here is that when these shifters emerge forth, they will be somebody else. And we see that here. I mean, looking right here on the board, 
Oh, well, that's my crazy wall. The red-headed woman right here. I'm just trying to make sense of things. Don't judge me. I'll trade you walls any day. Me, but not me. Others, I know, yet they are different. See, they're making direct references to the untitled note here on this whiteboard, and it's kind of freaking crazy. Yes, Jinx. I've seen a lot of people trying to make the, the um, assertion that Chester Bless from the Blessed Organization is another version of Paul Serene. But, again, we have no confirmation on that, but that's just something that was brought up. I just wonder what would happen if Jesse and Tim got in the same room and if there were some kind of unconscious recognition there. See you around, Alan. Take it easy, dude. Oh, because Tim keeps seeing polyhedrons around, even like an octahedron that he thinks is a UFO. Okay, let's find another safe spot before I try to mess with that. Get on out of here. No, no, no. I, I think you're talking about the shape of Hedron, and Hedron has way too many sides for that. But Hedron may still be a platonic solid, because I presume there's more than just the five that we're aware of. Which I think there's actually six, but... Does the dark place look different to Breaker? Like, doesn't see Alan wake? Uh, I don't see any evidence of that. It seems like they're all witnessing themselves in the same physical location. But their dreams definitely probably shift around a lot. Okay. Words of Lamp. Okay, uh, provide 25% chance to regain flashlight upon killing an enemy. Yes, give me that lucky strike. I'm surprised I didn't go more to that during my first run. Um, increases damage debt by the last uh, thing in the rifle thing. Let's go ahead and do that. You lost you in the whole speech? No worries, dude. Well, Patrice, we see, like, for example, Saga sees this place as this place. She doesn't see it any differently. Tim doesn't mention seeing it any differently. I mean, this isn't like Silent Hill where everybody sees a different thing. I mean, when you're in someone a, a story that someone else dreamed up, you're still in their story. If you're in someone else's dream, you witness their dream, not your own. Alright. I hate this part. Fuck me.
think we're good. I died like four times that my first time through. It was actually kind of shit. All right, we're safe. Let's go ahead and do our level ups. Uh, ding. Let's go ahead and just max out the roulette for now. It would be nice for the DLC to be on your birthday. Dude, that'd be a lovely birthday gift. Okay. Why does Wake, um, why does Wake do the guns with slow recoil and low mag counts? I don't know. The slow reload's so freaking frustrating. And there's an echo back through there that we're going to have to find. Crap. We're going to have to backtrack. And we forgot a container over here as well. Shoot. Now the question is, is this door going to be open? Because this door was locked every single time we come here during the base game. But since the door is open up bowl, I'm wondering if we're actually going to enter this building at some point. Holy Jesus! That's I no. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, sir. I am going away. February twenty eighth is your B day. Well, we'll see what happens. I haven't seen any announcements on when the DLCs are going to be released, so I can't really say much. So it's way up here. I want to get all that gear over there. Where am I? It's over here on the right. There we go. Ooh, yes. Gimme, 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 gimme. And somewhere along the road, we missed the echo. Or at least the second echo. So let's see if we can find it. Yes, that is the moment where you just nope on out of there. That's the moment when Han Solo turns around the corner and sees like a thousand stormtroopers staring at him. He goes, F, F this shit I'm out. <laughs> oh wait, hold on, hold on. This is where it is. I forgot to come up here. second you let your guard down. You thought you had it tamed. That you knew what the hell you were doing. Your last mistake. Unless you got lucky. And you didn't deserve to get lucky. You blinked at the wrong time. Let your mind wander. And the fire escape that was meant to be your getaway route was gone. It was never there at all. You'd gotten turned around somewhere along the way. The city was coming to finish you off, and there was nowhere left to run. So, I have a hypothesis that has not been tested, and I don't know if the end of New Game Plus is going to give me any of these, at least any more data points to support this. My personal opinion is that the real-life Casey, now that we see him in the dark place at the end of the base game, is that he never actually gets out. And what ends up happening is that that Casey is forced to play the role of this Alex Casey that we're experiencing at the moment. He literally gets caught up in all the sto the fictional stories about Alex Gacy as the actor playing himself. Uh, 
Um, the next Remedy game in my head is probably going to be the Max Payne remakes, but right now we have Thestral, or technically Vanguard, which got renamed as Thestral, I believe. There's also Project Condor, and Control 2 is probably going to be the last one in the lineup, to be 100% honest. So yeah, De Control 2 definitely will not be the next one. Yeah, so right now they have Max Payne 1 and 2 remakes, uh, Thestral, Condor, and Control 2. So that's five games currently. Plus the DLCs, if you count them. Okay, where are you? There it is. I did walk right past it. Darn it. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just max out his health, and then the next one will be the health increase. So, my opinion on that Harkon is well, technically, the future Alan, when he called back at the end of the base game, did specify that yes, Alan will get out, and no, Alan will not get out. And that's not contradictory, because anybody that enters the Dark Place in essentially is there forever. Because a version of them will always be there. Because of how time doesn't work properly. So even if you escape, there's still going to be a, a version of you in there that exists forever, because time has no meaning. It's kind of a difficult thing to say. You have to finish your version of New Game Plus. No worries. I'm actually... I'm going to be ending this off right here um, as well. As soon as we head down into here. Because this whole next section is going to take a while. And it's coming up to 9 o'clock on my end. And I got work in the morning. And I also need to finish editing the uh, audio for the next uh, video. So I was, I'm, I'm like halfway done with it. I'm going to finish that up uh, as soon as we finish off stream here. The gates to the platform were closed. I had a Darn ticket. It. Give me something good, and it gave me absolutely nothing. I love this. Identity theft is on the rise. You may not be the only you out there. Dude, if they had a, Ma a Death Rally minigame in Max Payne, I would lose it. That'd be freaking awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Yeah, we're going to end this off here. I'm going to be... Actually, you know what? I should probably go find a save point. <laughs> I probably should have a save point and not do it like this. Let's head over back over to Mr. Door's place. Because I think that's the closest uh, coffee thermos until this opens up. No, you haven't missed anything new. So the new video went up this morning on um, the seven Easter eggs that I wanted to bring attention to. But the next one is going to be coming out next week. I'm just going to finish editing the audio right now. Wait, can I get in here? Oh, there it is. And then I'm going to get it over to Yellow Bat so we can start editing on that. And from there, I'm going to start writing the next video, which I might jump back over to Psychonauts briefly, only because I want to finish New Game Plus before I write anything more on Alan Wake. Because I want all the most up-to-date information. Hey, but anyways, guys, I'm going to leave you all off for now. And I will see you all on either tomorrow or Friday. Most likely Friday. Most likely Friday. Last time when this uh, the game came out, doing two or three streams a day, every day back to back, was <laughs> killed me. It really killed me. I'm not made for this full-time streaming life, unfortunately. Then it was all nighty-night. Thank you all for hanging out. I will see you all shortly. Bye-byes.